Hello and welcome to Ryan Watches the Movie. My name is Adam Patterson. With me today, we got Kevin Rakestraw. Hey, Kevin. Hey, what's up? What's going on? Not a whole lot, bud. All right. Wonderful. We're also joined by Ryan Holes. How are you? Uh, what's up, Ryan? Uh, uh, if you're just tuning in for the first time, Kevin and I are challenging ourselves to find movies Ryan likes in the hopes that we will reach a coveted 10 out of 10, which if you listened to last week, we did. We did it already. We're done. Yeah. Well, we're going to continue our quest. You can join in on the conversation by sending your movie suggestions for Ryan to p- podcast to filmpulse.net or by sending me a DM on Twitter at filmpulse.net. If you like the show, consider helping us out by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash filmpulse and be sure to check out the Fredericks Ataxia Research Alliance website at curefa.org. Ryan, what movie did we have you watch this week? The night comes for us. The night comes for us. You wanted action, so we gave you action. This is directed by Timo Jahanto. I have a synopsis here. Ito, a gangland enforcer, caught amidst a treacherous and violent insurrection within his triad crime family. I, I, no, I read it right. I read it right. <laughs> I, I thought that I read it wrong. Ito, a gangland enforcer, caught amidst a treacherous and violent insurrection within his triad crime family upon his return home from a stint abroad. Not grammatically correct. Just a mouthful. Just a mouthful. Anyway, Ryan, tell us a little bit about The Night Comes For Us. Uh, All right. I probably won't remember names because I just don't remember them for some reason. And okay. this is be, uh, I don't want to sound racist, but I can't tell the difference between a lot of them. What? Was that, was that racist? Yeah, well, that was yeah. a little bit. Yeah, I think that was a little racist. Especially in this movie, because I feel like every character looks very different from the others. Like, they all have their own unique traits. But plus I want to point out usually anytime you say I don't want to sound racist, but you sound racist. What? <laughs> it's, it's just a heads up. Hey, that's a general I, rule. I didn't want to sound so dickhead. I just can't really I don't know, whatever. <laughs> um work on it. <laughs> and also, this is something which I really thought was going to get me, but I didn't. Yeah, well, so normally, yeah, so one of the rules with this is no subtitled movies, but I thought this might be an exception because it's so action heavy and dialogue is not, you know, there's not a ton of it in this movie. It's mainly for the, you're, you're here for the action with this movie. With a subtitle, I find it draws them to watch what's going on and read how that's a coordination thing. But anyway, uh, there are six members of a gang in Indonesia, and the movie I was with. One of them on a beach with a whole bunch of patchmen and they're murdering everyone and the last person alive is a little girl and the the main bad guy stops all the henchmen points a gun at her and pulls the trigger. And the camera pans away, and I guess you're supposed to think the girl was murdered, but they didn't show it because she's a little girl. But what really happened is he just turned against all the henchmen and turned the gun against all of them and killed all of them. And from that point on, 
Uh, it's pretty much on everyone. <laughs> every, <laughs> everyone comes after him, and they don't stop. They just come wave after wave. And you guys think it's to help with a few other his friends. But we're also in the gang. Oh, I'm not really sure why they all turned against the gang. But apparently they're more interested in helping each other rather than the gang. And just to pause you there for a second, they were they weren't in the triads, they were in their own gang. So they they weren't part of the triads. So they didn't betray the triads because they were never members. The only people that became members were Ito and uh Aryan, played by Iko Uwais, I believe. Okay, so I don't even know what I like this a lot. I don't even know where to be in explaining. Well, okay, well, that's that's fine. I mean, I think that's a good yeah. synopsis. I think, but like Adam said, you know, it's the action. We got the basic setup here. Mm-hmm. Dude, dude turns yeah. on him, and they come after him. Like you said, it's on, and they come in waves, and he's just got to fight them off. Like, there's not a whole lot to it, I don't think. No, there's the, the stuff with the girl, too, where he's trying to, the whole his whole goal is to get out of the country with the girl, Reina. And he knows that they're going to be coming after him. And so he gets his, his friends to try to help get them passports and try to get smuggle them out of the country. But it's like the tribes are one step ahead. Every time they just keep coming and coming and coming. And then there's also the, the, um, Julia Stell's character, the operator, she's coming after the triads too. Is that the trick of the bike? Yeah. yeah why? 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 <laughs> well, why is she going after him? She's trying to kill. So she she's going after all six of the the, the six C's or whatever they are. She's so she's trying to kill all of the triads, oh. and she doesn't know she doesn't know at first that he's no longer with them. That's why when she finds out, she she oh, help, she okay. helps him out. Right. That girl's a badass. <laughs> yeah, that girl fucks a lot of people. There's, I have to say. There are a lot of amazing deaths in this. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I I think in my review for this movie, I said if you thought if you you thought the raid movies were were too too kid friendly, they were too tame, then maybe look at the night comes for us because it's very similar in style to the raid, but the 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 level of violence is amped up by many many times. I really didn't think when I want to read that it could get any more violent, but it does. <laughs> yeah. This movie is, it's almost, it's almost a horror movie. The level of gore in this almost classify it as a horror movie. You know, I just want to talk about what that's like a lot. Is there a whole lot of, like a whole lot of so there's a lot of sort of action set pieces in this movie. What was, what do you think was your favorite of the action sequences? I like the, when he stabbed the dude with in the mouth with the bottle, the entire <laughs> champagne bottle. And I yeah. like the, I like the, the scene at the pool table. Where the guys fucked up like fifteen different people. Yeah, that was a big fight. He fights a lot of people all at once, and they all have like machetes. And he's just when he the the one guy that he just pounds in the face repeatedly with the the pool ball. And then he turned out the gun, 
And for whatever reason, the one guy is doubling up the ray gun, and he pays the price for it. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people pay the price. If you're familiar with the raid, the raid movies, the 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 pretty much the main cast of this is all people from the raid movies. So you have Eco Wise, as I mentioned before. He's like sort of this reluctant villain in it. Ito is played by Joe Toslim. He's uh he was in the raid also. Julie Estelle was in the raid too. She was Hammer Girl from the raid too. Zach Zach Lee was also in the raid too. So you have a, a lot very familiar cast here. So you sort of you sort of know what to what you're getting into when you see a cast like this. Some really, really crazy over the top. Yeah, because it's just essentially one set piece, one action set piece to the next. And you just you gotta usher the audience to the next set piece. Mm-hmm. And you just gotta try and top the one that we just came from. And yeah, work your way up to like a, a crazy. It's like a fireworks display. Mm-hmm. The grand finale. Yeah, especially that the end fight scene. That Bobby, I think a lot of punishment. <laughs> but White boy Bobby. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he gets takes a lot of beatings to beat the shit out of people. And yeah, and he's missing a leg too. So he. he does it all with a, a missing leg. I just I always have a difficult time watching this because so much of it is so much of the fists are focused on the knees. It's just <laughs> yeah. a lot of a lot of leg work. And I'm just like, how are you guys? How are you standing? How are you getting up? How are you doing anything? I don't get it. Yeah, it's it's pretty brutal. There's a lot of scenes in this that will make you squirm, I think. That just just insane like the the whole uh butcher shop fight scene it, it's just so over the top yeah the box cutter in the mouth <laughs> yeah the box cutter in the mouth scene the way he gets out of that i love it <laughs> oh, are you, are you doing well what do you cut out <laughs> he just like bites it off he bites it off oh. <laughs> <laughs> It makes me cringe even after watching it. <laughs> you have a lot of really interesting characters in this too. I I can't remember her name. I'm looking, I'm looking for her in the, in the cast list, but I, I can't rem- recall. But she's the one that has like the the razor wire as a weapon. Uh, there's some. Uh, I my short haired girl. Yeah, there's a lot of interesting things she does that razor wire i think that that lends itself to one of the cooler fight sequences between julia stell's character and her and then the 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 blonde haired woman with the uh i don't know what kind of knife that is no, but no what they call lesbians what yeah they call we know lesbians <laughs> Yeah, that that was one of the few. There were a few humorous scenes, but that was one of the few where you have this like crusty old gangster guy calling the two of them lesbians, and then immediately getting mowed down. I liked a lot of the characters, but I think Julia Stills' character is probably the most badass of the bunch. Just, like the scene, the scene when they first come after her, and she has like the C four planted on the wall, and just blows the shit out of them. Yeah. Oh, I can she a big uh Aristides action girl. She's getting there. She's in a number of things. She's in non action movies too. She's not in all action movies. She was in uh she was in Headshot, which was this director's previous film, which was also an action movie. Oh, I forgot yeah. about a headshot. Yeah, that was headshot was decent. It was alright. Indonesian. Embarrass me, uh, French at all? Because does she ever speak French? Yeah, 
don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a weird it's a boy that sounds like French. I don't know if she speaks French. I mean, it says here her father is French, but wow. I, Ryan just picking up on shit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I <laughs> Now, I know she's speaking Indonesian, but it, I I hear a little bit of a French <laughs> accent in there. I hear a little French twinge in her native Indonesian I language. Think what she was funny is uh two girls it sounded like what her and one of them were making a friend to each other. I just, I find it odd coming from the guy that I imagine doesn't watch that much foreign language films yeah. or TV or media really at all because of the subtitle thing. And, but here and, you are picking up <laughs> twinges of French. <laughs> you know what? It's the. More of the movies come that made it watch them. The Frenchman. District 13? That, the yeah. free running movies? That, yeah. That, yeah. That, that's, that's where he's pulling them. That's where he's pulling them from. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, that's your big, that's your reference point? District 13. <laughs> That's it. That's where his database of French language. <laughs> that's your. That, that's where you get your French cinema lessons. Hey, from. wait! This, this sounds like District Thirteen. <laughs> wait a second! I recognize that accent. Oh my god! It's incredible. I love it. I love it. Uh, so, Dude. Kevin. Kevin, you you watched this as well? No, I didn't. Oh, ah, uh, twist. <laughs> well, you know, you were talking like the way you were no, talking. It I watched. Like you saw it. I, w- I watched some of the the like the action clips because I figured oh, okay. that was like the the whole thing, anyways. Really, I was gonna and, say like, how are you able to like <laughs> talk about how he no, no. removed the box cutter because that's like in the final scene <laughs> of the movie. That was that was one of the main ones that I watched and that was the one that man that was that was uh that was rough to watch because I have a thing with like table saws anything with like an open blade moving any open blade moving just scares the shit out of me Mm. and that was that was tough and then he like he kicks that beam Mm -hmm. which just get away from the Get away from the beam, guys. Yeah, just, I didn't that's like not that. Smart. <laughs> and the, I box, just, I, the box cutter didn't bother you, but when he kicked that beam. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the box cutter stuff, too. Because I have a thing with box cutters. Blades just in general. But I do love that like that that fight sequence starts off not level, and then they 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 drop it to to go hand to hand, so it's kind of level there for a while, and then it just devolves into any weapon that they can grab because they mm-hmm. just want to end it, and then it just be- turns into the like, this stabbing party, and they just stab yeah. the shit at each other just constantly, just one after another, just back and forth. Yeah the the fighting in this film, uh, like. L- comparing it to the raid movies is it's far grungier. Like it's, it's not quite as pretty. It's, it's still, it's excellently choreographed, but just the, the style that they're showing is much more of like just a straight up brawl. Yeah. They they still do some sweet moves though. Of course. Yeah. Absolutely. The scene on the pool table, I love I love the fact that at one point he just rips the light the light off of the above where the pool table is. He just rips that off and uses it as a weapon. It's a lot of uh double cross hand this way. Not double not double cut looking the other way. Like like the (laughs) like before crossing the street? Double cross hands? Is that what you said? What I thought I said double crossing. Double crossing. Double crossing. Double crossing. Okay. Yeah, there's a there's a there's a little bit of that going on in this. You're never quite sure who's on whose team. 
And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Nope. They're just going to kick the shit out of each other. Yeah. And I also like the ending. I like Where they the line up with the nips. It wasn't a normal ending. It was, oh, it was good. Yeah, they went out. They went out a blaze of glory. The uh, the the butcher shop scene, Kevin also has a, a a blade in it, like a like a bone saw thing. Yeah, like the table saw thing, where he like turns it on and he tries to put his face in it. I just yeah, but, I, I can't stand that shit. The the butcher shop scene has a saw blade, but it makes contact. Like you, oh, you see it just tearing. See, people I up. would no. See, I wouldn't be able to handle that. I would. I'd, I'd look away. I'd have to check something on my phone. This was a movie that was in production hell for a little little while. This, I think they were. He was working on this since 2014. I want to say, and he he had funding, and then it fell through, and. So he was going to just turn it into a graphic novel because he always sort of looked at the story as a, a graphic novel. But then I think at, uh, it was at a festival where he was sort of showing off his concept and then it got picked up. Mm. I, I don't know if Netflix produced it. it this is a Netflix original. Well, I am, I am curious now to see because I have an idea, but. Ryan kind of surprises me sometimes. So I am curious to see what he thought of this, especially with the whole subtitle thing going on. Like, is yeah. that going to affect the rating substantially? or And did the subtitle thing play a part in you having difficulty keeping track of the characters? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of uh, understandable because you I do, think- like, you can't, I, I, I'm, I'm guessing that you don't process subtitles as fast as me and Adam do. Correct. That's what I was just going to say. It's so yeah, the, that's un, yeah, that's understandable. It's a whole thing. It's a me thing. <laughs> just him looking down at the subtitles and looking up. But like, who's this guy? <laughs> uh yeah, we're not going to give you a lot of subtitled movies. We were, we were, when we were working on our list, we were making sure to not include those. I think actually this was the only, maybe this and one other one, but yeah. that's just because they were at really action heavy. Like uh, when, when you first take Vincent and Sopros, I immediately wasn't included. But then I watch it and I get it done. See, and I think that's the that's the difficult thing with action movies because I think a lot of the really good action movies are at least, if not entirely subtitled, is going to be partially subtitled. But with most action movies, you don't really need, like you can just watch an action movie and kind of get the gist of it. Yeah, I remember the first time I saw Ang Bak. Uh, I, I was over at someone else's house, and they only played the action scenes in Ang Bak. So that's that's how I first experienced that movie. I s- since then I saw the whole thing, but in retrospect, I'm like, I, I think I prefer the first way <laughs> I saw that movie. <laughs> I think the story is actually decent in this movie. I think that some action movies especially ones that are really action heavy like this movie. I think some of them have a pretty decent story. I think that this it's a bare bones story, but it's, yeah. it's interesting. They're, enough. Yeah. They're, they're always, they're always relatively simple. I think, uh, in contrast, a movie like district 13 has an awful <laughs> God, awful story, but the action is fun. <laughs> and say, same with Ong Bach. Don't be knocking Ryan's favorite French movie. <laughs> uh, all right, Ryan, let's give you your drum roll. What do you give The Night Comes for Us? Eight. That's oh. an 8 out of 10. See? Nice. That's awesome. That's, I was, was going to be a meal. It's like, 
<laughs> just subtitle, yeah, subtitles no. made a six right off the bat. Uh, well, that's what I was. That's what I was thinking with the first two movies. You know, when we were talking about it and discussing it, you were relatively, you know, positive. You you seemed to be really into them. And then when it came time for the drum roll, you'd be like six. So I was really curious to see how this one was going to go. Because again, you seemed really positive, but I didn't know how the the whole subtitle thing was going to. It. They fuck a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. See, I, 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 I kind of thought, I kind of thought, wasn't sure, but I kind of thought that the heavy, heavy, brutal action and violence was gonna overshadow yeah. the subtitles. And I was, I was kind of thinking the same thing. And I think this is, in the way to speak of this, is that it's gonna help our algorithm here it's because we know that we kind of have a ratio here of how much action there needs to be to offset the subtitles and it's got to be gory and they got to fuck up a lot of people it's got to be a high body count yeah right the the problem with the action genre moving forward is uh, first of all i don't think that there's going to be an action movie that's as bloody and violent as this one so that's going to be that's going to be hard to top yeah. that moving forward. There's one other one that we have on the list that I think is a strong contender. There was a specific reason I didn't pick that one, um, but that that um, I don't want to divulge to you, Ryan. But uh, there's there's some other ones that uh, that we could include. That but uh, man, I don't know. It's going to be hard to top that. Again, the subtitle thing. I'm learning more and more of that. It's not a everyone problem. It's a me problem. Uh, yeah. You guys can think and read at the same time. No problem. Yeah, yeah. no, that, that's understandable. Uh, it's it, we're, we're not looking down upon you. But for, I also for the. I, <laughs> I also think that <laughs> with as much trouble as that you have with it and the fact that you couldn't tell these people apart is that we could probably wait a couple of months and then just give you this movie again. Be <laughs> 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 like an all new movie. Uh, I still would remember anyone. <laughs> just at one point you'd be like, is she speaking French? Now, one thing I want to ask, because I know how you watch movies you will latch on to movies and rewatch them. You're a rewatcher. That's something that unfortunately I just can't uh, afford to do. He's already, he's been we, what we do in the shadows for the last week and a half. Yeah. So uh, what I want to start doing is on the movies that you like, I want to start asking you, do you see yourself rewatching this? Is this going to be put into a rotation? Probably. Okay. As I as as soon as I get a grasp on the different character names and like who's who, brother, you know, like all the bikes are badass. I want to learn their names. Just give them nicknames. That's what I started doing a little. <laughs> <laughs> but they make sense and no one else. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to put you on the spot with that. But I. I would appreciate if you would send me a list of the nicknames offline. <laughs> <laughs> Any final thoughts about um, the night comes for us before we close it out this week? Yeah, yeah it's worth it, and it's on Netflix too. So if you have Netflix, worth you can it. check it out on there. Hit you with a worth it. Worth it. This is, I mean, this is it's, different. It's, it's like the polar opposite of don't even waste your time. This is, that that uh, doesn't even apply now. Um, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, like, I like how you, you surprised yourself with that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> That does not apply. Just a little quiet. A little quiet. Wow. 
<laughs> just a second after. Oh, it was the best. Love it. Uh, I think that's a, a perfect place to end it off this week. Thank you so much for listening. You can send us your picks for Ryan and questions to podcast at filmpulse.net. You can follow us on Twitter at filmpulse.net, at filmpulse Kevin, and at my legs don't work. And if you have a minute, take a look at our Patreon page, patreon.com slash filmpulse. Consider helping us out by becoming a subscriber. For Kevin Rakestraw and Ryan Holes, my name's Adam Patterson, and we'll see you next week. Yeah, later.